Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this is a webinar of Business Markers. I am Lynn and I'm the moderator of this session. Um, at first, I'm going to explain how it works. Um, so at your right uh, on the screen, you see the chat function. You can chat with the whole group. Um, you can say hello if you want to, <laughs> so you can see how it works. Uh, you can also ask a question. Uh, that's the second tab. Uh, and then Idas will answer all your questions. Um, you can also participate in our polls. We will have several polls in this webinar, um, as you will see. Our guest speaker for today is Ides Ticket. Um, Ides has more than 20 years experience in general management, business development, marketing and innovation at Procter & Gamble, Coca-Cola Company and MTV Networks. He has two kids and he's a gadget lover. He's founder and managing partner of Business Markers. He's very pragmatic, result-oriented and full of energy, as you will see. Um, today, he's going to explain the one-page business plan called the OGSM. So now I'm going to pass the floor to our guest speaker, Ida Stiket. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome in the webinar about the one-page business plan. Uh, one, page one page business plan, how does it work? Let me give you some explanation. First of all, I'll give you already an introduction of what it is. The, the, the OGSM exists. Uh, well, first of all, the one page business plan, we put it on a one page and we use the acronym OGSM to explain it. It's the O of objective, the G of goal, the S of strategies, the M of measures, and measures we have twice in this one pager. Measures can mean to measure as a verb. That's what we've put next to the strategies. And the second measures is the noun, taking measures that we put at the right side. That's where we will put our actions or projects. Now, a couple of things you see on this uh, OGSM model is the blue and red colors. Well, that's a key difference. The blue things are written in words. The red things are written in figures. So you also see, for those who are colorblind, that we've put a pen and a calculator. Now, if I look if, to the top of it, objective. What is an objective in a one-page plan? What's that? Or ambition. Our ambition expressed in words. And the goals, the goals are our ambitions expressed in figures. That's one line. Now you see that from the objective and goals, there's one line going down to the strategies. The strategies are our building blocks on how we can achieve our objective. The sum of these strategies make us realize it. If we have strategies which are not necessary to achieve our objective, we're going to eliminate them. After the move from objective and goals downwards to the strategies, we move from the left to the right. The strategic blocks will be translated in measures. We will measure whether we are on track to reach our strategies. And fully at the right, we translate our strategies into actions. Now that's how it works. So I would like you to thank you for your attention. This was the webinar. No, joking. I will explain a little bit more. Everybody has a plan until you get punched in the face. If I am in a live meeting room, I ask people whether they have dreams or they have plans. And 100% of the people, they have dreams or plans. And that's good. Though if I ask whether they realize their plans, only 20% of the people say that they realize the plan that they had in their mind when asking it. And that's strange. And there are different reasons. That's because... The plan or the dream exists, but it's not written down how to do it, how to get there. Or they get punched in the face, something gets in the way when, uh, when they want to do it. And, uh, well, imagine Mike Tyson says, everybody who fights against me has a plan until they get punched in the face. Now, the question is, okay, how can we realize our plan? And it can be both for your personal life, traveling around the world. It can be for... Uh, a football team or a hockey team or a sport team from you or the kids, or it can be for your department or for your company. 
I will explain three things today. First of all, why it is good, a good idea to have a plan. Secondly, how to make a good plan. And as a third topic, the common mistakes that are made in a plan. Let's start with why it is a good idea to have a plan. I'm going back 60 years in time. 60 years in time, there was GFK. GFK on the 25th May 1961, he brought together more than 30,000 people in a big baseball stadium. And he announced something. He announced that we would go to the moon. And not only that we would go to the moon, we would bring back, we could, we would come back alive on Earth. And there was even one, one, uh, one additional element. We should come, we should do this before the end of the decade. Now you should know when he announced this, this was in the period of the Cold War. Uh, the Russians already had sent Laika, uh, the dog, into space. Uh, we were in a, in a special environment. Now, putting a man on the moon, my question for you is, if we go back to the OGSM model, is putting a man on the moon, was that the objective of President GFK? Let's go to the poll and you'll see there is a question. Was this the objective of GFK? I'm uh, asking you to give your answer. So let's see how interactive the people are. No, it was not. Well, good news. Uh, most of you are right. A couple of uh, people, uh, I have to explain why. Putting a man on the moon was not the objective of GFK. His objective, his real objective was making Americans proud again. And that was what he had to do. It was in the Cold War and he had several strategies. And one of the strategies was putting a man on the moon. But he also had to win some discussions in Cuba and he had war in Vietnam. So there were different strategies how he could make the Americans proud again. Okay. For GFK, he wanted to make the Americans proud again. And it was the NASA who got the strategy, putting a man on the moon, and he had to realize it. And that's where the strategy of GFK became the objective of NASA, putting a man on the moon. Now imagine, if this was their objective of the NASA, would they have done everything that was necessary? Let me explain myself. If you put a man on the moon and they have a rocket strategy and they have a training strategy for astronauts and they have a financial strategy to make sure that they could finance it, then they would have put a man on the moon, but nobody on Earth would be sure that this really happened. So how can we make sure if we are working with about strategy that NASA also reassures that people know about it. Well, that's simple. One of the most important elements in strategy formulation is going to be the word by. What, by, how? The by makes sure that we have a strategy which is distinctive versus others. It gives direction to our plans. So the NASA had an objective, and the objective of NASA was not only putting a man on the moon, but making sure that the Americans are proud again by putting a man on the moon. If this is their objective, then they would understand that they need a communication strategy, strategy, a PR strategy to communicate to the people the tremendous step in mankind that was taken. So remember, the word by has to be used during the full strategy process. We will use it in objective, we will use it in strategy, we will use it in actions, we will use it even in the analysis. So stick that in your mind, the word by. By is important. Now, 
November 22nd, 1963, President GFK got assassinated. Oh my God, that's the moment where most of the plans stop. That's where if somebody leaves the company, that the plans are not continued. Luckily, the NASA had a plan and they were one of the first people on Earth working with OGSM. They made this and every strategy of the rocket, of the training team was cascaded down into the organization so everybody knew what to do to make sure that before the end of the decade, we put a man on the moon. And uh, it was July 1969 that they realized this. Now, this methodology, OGSM, you can use it for your team uh, and your company too. Objectives, goals, strategies, and the double measures. Now, why do you need a plan on one page? Well, this guy is following a path. If you don't know where you're going, you probably end up somewhere else. Even more, if you don't know where you're going, you can end up anywhere. So if you want to arrive somewhere, you have to put an ambition, you have to put a destination in front of you. And that's important. So five reasons why you need a plan. It helps you to realize your dream. If you have a dream and you want to do a world trip, if you have to dream and you want to acquire new companies, you need to translate it into actionable plans. It's easier to share with your team. If you have a plan, you can break it down in blocks so everybody can work on it. Also, people can contribute in making the plan. The third element why you need a plan is it makes you reflect. Once you have actions, you can look what are the milestones. Do I have the, the, the right financial and human resources? Do I need any transformations to get there? A fourth element is it forces you to make choices. Yesterday, I had a workshop and in the end, we had like 30 projects or actions. And somebody said, but that's too much. Well, we've identified, and I will come back on that one, what are the most important projects? And there were 10 projects that were crucial to make a difference. So why do you need a plan? It forces you to make choices, to set priorities, what we'll do first. Other things might be done later or not. And a fifth element, why you need a plan on one pace is you track and measure your progress. If you don't have a plan, you can arrive anywhere. So you need to know whether you're on the right, right path and whether you're progressing in the right way. So this was the first part of the presentation, why it is a good idea to have a plan. Five key reasons. Second question is now, how to make a good plan? Um, and I like to explain that with the number one. Let's, 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 let's think that we want to be the number one, that we want to grow our market share or revenue, whatever, or business. I always recommend to translate the one also in 1%. 1% means 1% of our time. We work approximately 2,000 hours a year. Some people more, some people less. So if you think about 1% of our time, we're thinking about 20 hours. 20 hours. That's the minimal time that you and your team should invest in writing a plan. The other 99% you can use to realize your plan. But at least take 20 hours a year to reflect on, the, on your plan. Where am I going to? 20 hours, it's two and a half days. It's not a lot. And still, a lot of companies do not take on a yearly base that time to reflect on where they're going. This should give you the energy because in the end, you are selecting the things that you believe are right to do. And you do this not alone. You do this together with your team as one team because I believe that if the team is engaged and involved, they will be way more motivated to realize a plan. And the last one, is summarize the plan on one page. I see lots of companies with thick presentations. I'm guilty too, I have done it in the past, 30 to 50 slides explaining the future of our company. Now, it's impossible to track your plan if you really have a thick presentation. So that's why we recommend to have an A4, one page. And there is even a page that is more ideal. 
And that's a coaster. Why, why, why do I love to put my OGSM on a, on a coaster? Well, if I can explain my plan in a bar, in a pub, and the other guy gets interested and motivated to listen to me, well, then I believe I have a good plan. There's another reason why I'm, I'm writing it down on a coaster. That's the language. Often, when we are in a company, we see a lot of managerial words, words that only are used in a company. But if you have to explain it to your people, they, they don't know what it means. Imagine the marketing department is explaining about increasing the penetration. And the sales guys are looking like, what the hell is he talking about? So stop using managerial language. Use language that you can use in a bar. I invite you all, if you already have a plan, explain it to your mother-in-law. If she understands your plan, great. If she listens at, and she has your, you, you get your, her full attention, then, then that's good. In Dutch, I say use Jip and Janneke taal. So we put our objective, goals, strategies, and measures on our coaster. In reality, of course, it's not always going to be on a coaster. We can put a one page on a plan, and this is an example how it can look like. If you want, you can download this model with objectives and goals, strategies, and measures to help you fill it in. You see also these green colors. These are the helpful tools to look whether you're on track. Because every month, at least every month, you will look whether you are progressing in the right way, both on the goals, on the measures in figures, and the measures in actions. Quite some companies are using it. You see some logos here of companies who are uh, got trained or using uh, OGSM models. They are international companies and they are very small companies. You can use it as it for private life, for sports clubs, for teams, and you can use it even for big companies and cascade it from level up to level down. Now, if you want to develop this OGSM, there are four elements in the strategy formulation to realize your plan. First of all, there's a part which is understanding your own business. What am I good in? What am I not good in? And also understanding the market. What is changing in the market? What is coming towards us? What are the risks? What are opportunities? What are trends that we can uh, should look at? Then we go into the 1% or strategy formulation. We have to communicate it to all our team members in strategy communication. And then we have to realize our plans, strategy execution. I like to, to explain it in strategy making, doing, and telling. So in this order, it would be strategy making, strategy telling, and strategy doing. These three are important. And for all of these three, the OGSM model, the plan one page, can be your guide. Now, let's go deeper in the market and business analysis. I like to compare this analysis with your business is a car. And the first element is you open your car and you look at the inside. What are we doing good? What are we doing not good? Where are we proud of? Where are we not proud of? Uh, what did we achieve? What did we not achieve? And for most companies, this is an easy exercise. They know their car. They know what they've done. They know where they've been driving. So only when you have a startup, this is more difficult because you haven't done anything yet. And that's where looking at the outside is getting more important. For most companies, this is the bigger challenge because they are so used to work inside out, working outside in is a difficult one. If I get out of my car, what do we see around me? Am I in a traffic jam or am I driving fast? Are there other cars? What's happening with other type of cars? What's the weather forecast? Where am I driving? You should look at trends that are happening around you and threats. And that's where we summarize this. Most of you will know SWOT, but I don't like SWOT. I always talk about SWTTs. We have strengths and weaknesses. That's the inside of our car. And then we have trends and threats. Opportunities is most of the time wrongly translated into things you can do. That's not the case. Here, it goes really about what's happening in the outside world. The SWTT exercise. Now, even with companies, 
big companies where we get one meter of decks with figures, research, analysis, we come back to a SWTT. And most of the time, in every block, you get about 40. In every block, you get about 10 elements. So you end up with about 40 elements. Bad. Too bad. If your analysis ends up with 40 things, you can't make a plan. So I have another poll for you. You know SWOT, but do you also know Power SWOT? You can go to the poll and submit your vote, whether you have heard of Power SWOT yet, whether you know it, or whether you never have heard of Power SWOT. So let's have a look how active the people are. Oh, somebody does know, somebody knows. Good. It seems that most have never heard of PowerSwot. So that's good news. I can explain something. PowerSwot is the next step after your SWTT. So what will you do? You will look at each of these blocks and you will score the items on the impact, the impact that they will have on the future of your business. If you believe that you have a strength, which you should make even stronger to win in the future, you give a high score. If you have a weakness that you believe this one is important to tackle, to win in the future, you give a high score. If you have a trend where you believe, if you capitalize on that trend, you give a high score. And if you have a threat where you believe that you should that you should survive that one, overcome that one, or stay ahead of that risk, give a high score. Where do you end up? You end up with a SWTT, where you have four times three elements. These three elements, you translate into implications. What can we do to make our strength stronger? What can we do to make sure that we tackle our weakness, that we capitalize on the trend, and that we stay ahead, overcome, or survive the threat? And this is the eight square SWTT called simply power spot. This helps because it goes to the essence. If you have these 10 to 12 elements, every one of these topics need to be tackled in your strategic plan. And that's the difference with a regular SWTT. Now, this is the first part, market and business intelligence. Now we move to the OGSM. And the first one is our objective. It seems easy. We're going to fill it in. But there are, you need to do some good analysis and have some brave discussions. I give you an example of uh, football clubs. Well, remember that we will use the what, by, how. Making Americans proud again by putting a man on the moon. We will use this in this football example. There are lots of clubs who want to become the most successful club. And you can do this in different ways. You can do this by attracting the best players in the world, like Paris Saint-Germain or like Real Madrid. Or you can do it by finding and developing talent, young talent. That's what FC Barcelona is doing and what uh, Anderlecht is now trying to do. And then there are even clubs who are using new technology and data to guarantee success, like Michiland. And even by using new technology and data, they recruited mediocre players, but by putting the right players on the right, put, on the right spots and having a good combination, they became champion in their country. So it's important not only to have an objective, we want to become the most successful club, but we also need to give direction how we want to achieve this. So let's have a look at FC Barcelona. They want to be the world's most successful and admired club by finding and developing the most talented young players. Well, if you tell me on a, rub, on a coaster at a bar this story, I'm going to be intrigued. I want to know more about it. First of all, in our plan, we will fill in the objective in the upper quadrant. The second element now is to identify the goal. If we want to be the most admired and successful club by developing and finding young talents, 
how do we measure this? And we have to measure both what and how in our plan, as well as financial targets. I'll explain that one. But first, it's also important to reflect on your ambitions. We have lots of companies where we ask, okay, but what's your plan? And the real plan is they want to grow with plus 2% or win 1% market share. And then I ask, is this really your plan? Is it really your dream? No, no, our dream is to grow with 20 or 30%. Ah, that's more interesting. And that's important in your goal. Where do you put your ambition? Is it a basic one or do you have your stretch one? Because you will have different plans. We've been working a couple of years now for a company and it's very clear. Every three years, they want to double their business. So you also know that the plans you will make will be different. I compare it to high jumping. When you go back 50 years ago, high jumping was done by a scissors jump. So people tried to get and, re and, and get across the bar uh, and they got nearly up to two meters high in the high jumping with a scissors jump. There was one guy who said like, it's going to be difficult to beat world records uh, if we use the, continue to use this technique. He wanted to jump two and a half meter. And then he said, I need another technique. I need to think differently. And that's where the Fosbury flop was invented. It was, okay, you go and think in another way. Now you must imagine with the Fosbury flop today, we go both, we go around two and a half meter. Though the circumstances at that point in time were that you jumped and you landed on sand. This means that the first people who did the Fosbury flop had pretty tough landings. The Olympic Committee was not yet ready to change sand into mattresses. So it took quite some time before they decided that they should change from sand to a mattress. So when putting a goal, even your outside environment might not be ready, but you need sometimes to stretch yourself and see where you want to go for. Is it a basic goal or do you really want to go for a stretch goal and have different techniques, different plans? Now back to Barcelona. We said there are goals on the what, successful and admired club, on the how, developing talents, and always goals on the financial targets. Even if it's a sport club, it needs to be, or a non-profit, they need to have a break-even uh, target. Successful and admired, well, we put figures on it. We want to have eight national trophies won by one in the next 10 years. And we want to have sold 2 million jerseys worldwide, not only in Spain, worldwide. That's going to be your key PIs to be successful and admired. Now, developing talents, that means that 70% of our squad, of the squad, exists of former academy players. Even if they are sold from FC Barcelona to Real Madrid and they are good, they should become members of the squad. Financial target, we put a profit goal. So we know during the years that we are on track or off track. We put the goals beneath the objective and we're going to reflect on the strategies. What should we do to get there? What are the building blocks to get there? And for Barcelona, we have three. First of all, we have to find these future stars. Secondly, we have to develop our players. And thirdly, financial security to make the system work. And you can say, okay, that's enough. But I repeat, what, by, how? We need to give direction, find these future stars. We're going to do this through new and advanced scouting techniques. And these player developments, that's going to be through professional coaching models. And financial security is going to be mainly, the biggest key is going to be smart transfer deals because we have young players, cheap, and we will sell them for a lot of money after a couple of years. So we have the what by how in the strategies. And we put it at the left side in our plan. We go to the right and we want to measure our strategies. And I'm going to give you one example on the quantify the strategy of player development. Well, for every player and every year, we want five youth players to be selected for the national youth team. That's the what and the how. All our coaches are FCB certified. And there is a specific certification program. We put the measures in our plan and translate it into our actions. And we'll have clear actions. Three actions, attract the best youth coaches, train these coaches, 
and monitor on a daily basis the player growth. Also here on the actions, we use what by how. And that's where we make a difference because you're going to be, you need to find these unique elements where you make a difference. Attract the best coaches. We're not going to do them by paying them a lot of money. We will do this by offering in-stadium accommodation. These coaches worldwide get the opportunity to have a room and a studio in the camp now. That's a different approach. Train coaches. No, we're not going to do this in Barcelona only. They will have internships around the world to get and learn the best techniques. And monitor player growth. Well, every young player will be tracked both for his physical skills, his techniques, as his mental skills. And through digital tracking, we will improve his performance. So what happens? We put this in our plan and we have the O, G, the S and the double M. And if I put it over time, we have the what by how, being the most successful admired club by finding and developing young talent. That's the how. And our goals, we can measure them. That's our vision. And we will bring that to actions. We have three strategies, like the player development. And a player development translates into the action plan that will have in, come in, uh, in no camp uh, accommodation. So we go what by how, goals, what by how, dashboard, what by how. And this brings us from vision to action on the one hand. But once we've identified our plan, it brings us also from action to vision. We can follow up whether we do the things that we believe are the right things to do to make sure that we achieve our strategies. And if we do all these strategies, we believe we can reach our ambition because our objective is our ambition, both in words and in figures. And that's the essence of OGSM. Of course, there is dynamic strategic planning and we can skip some things in the action plan and improve them. But our objective and the what over strategies will remain the same for at least one year. The objective should remain the same for at least three to five years. OGSM means not saying yes to all the things you can do. It means saying no to the hundred other good ideas there are. And that's a crucial one. That's the most difficult part. Next to writing an objective is killing darlings, the most difficult part. Because everybody has good ideas and it's not easy to throw away your babies. But that's a crucial part of building a plan. You cannot be everything for everybody. You need to be selective. And I like the way that uh, Michael Jordan phrased it. Because writing an OGSM seems to be easy. A plan on one page. Let's do it. But you will see once you start, it's going to be less easy than you think. Certainly if you want it to be sharp and precise and concrete and giving direction and being different versus competition. But don't be afraid to fail. Be afraid not to try. Because if you do not have a plan, it's hard to involve your team. It's hard to give direction. It's hard to know whether you're on track. It's hard to realize your plan. At Business Markets, we have developed over the last years quite some additional tools to make sure that this OGSM creation is facilitated. And um, uh, I'm not going to explain all of these models. You can find them on our website, just like the OGSM model. If you want, you can download these models and you can use them if you want. If you want some of my information, feel free to contact me. Now, I tackle two things. Why it is a good idea to have a plan. How to make a plan. There are also mistakes, common mistakes in, in a plan. So new GSM is made. And I only want to work for the companies where one year later I come back and I see that they have achieved some things. But what I see is sometimes there are bananas on the road. And there are different kinds of bananas. Um, I will explain seven of these bananas. And the strange thing is, there are companies, they, they, they understand there is a banana, but it's like they avoid the banana. They're walking around it, or they're building a bridge across it, or they're putting like carton boxes on it so they don't see the banana. But that doesn't help. If you want to move forward, you need to clean up the banana. And the first banana is on ownership. Ownership means 
if you have strategies and actions, you need to allocate names and people who are responsible and accountable to achieve it. And on projects, this often happens. But I believe that structure follows strategy, that in your structure, you should have strategy owners. Most of the time when I'm explaining this in companies, they've never heard of strategy owners. These can be power rangers, these can be captains, they can be whatever you call them, but they own one of the strategy and they help the, the, the boss, the, the owner of the full OGSM to realize it. You can translate it in the structure of an organization, but that is not always the case. Sometimes it's a responsibility next to your functional responsibility to make sure that this strategy is achieved. Doesn't mean that you do everything, but it means that you take responsibility for progressing on this strategy. That's the first one, ownership. The second banana is on goal setting. Oh yeah, we have a long list of brainstorm on what we should measure and on goals, I say you can have four to eight goals. That's it. Four to eight goals. I'm, I see companies where you have full walls with figures. Oh, this is our key PI wall. Uh, key PI means key performance indicator, means there are a few of them. There is a difference between key PIs, key performance indicators. You have four to eight of them. You have performance indicators, where you track the progress of your strategy. You have project indicators, whether your project is moving forward. And then you have many indicators. And these are the figures that you, you want to know for your analysis, but they are not steering your business. So you need to put targets and figures and you can visualize them. You can make sure that everybody sees whether you're on track or off track, whether you have smiley faces or not. So make it simple and go for dashboarding. A third banana, not enough priority setting. They have a plan, but there are too many projects. And after a year, they did not realize the real ones. So how do we solve the priority setting? Well, with a priority matrix. When we have all our projects in the OGSM, so that's the M, the measures, the second measures, we map them on what has, will have the biggest impact if we do this. And on a, that's the horizontal axis, on the vertical axis. Is it feasible to do? Is it doable? If it's very doable and it has a high impact, we get home runs. If it's low impact and, and feasible, that's what people call low hanging fruits. I call it small wins. Uh, if you have high impact and low doability, you have the big bets. And then in the bottom, you have junk. Low impact, low doability. So don't waste your time or money on it. Now, what I see is if you critically evaluate the projects, there is a lot of shit. There is a lot of small wins, which has some impact. And it's easy. Somebody can do it. But we have fewer ideas that are home runs and big bets. And that's where we need to focus on. Home runs, you can do and have a high big impact. And that's as a manager, you can give to your team because you have the money, you have the budget, you can do it. Home runs. The big bets, as manager of the team, you have to take in your hands. This means it has a high impact. Low doability means you do not have the budget today or you do not have the people or capabilities. So you need some investments and you need some exercise to know on which big bet will I focus. Acquiring a new business, setting up an affiliate, introducing a new product or solution might be big bets. So that's the priority matrix. Let's move on. To the next banana. Fourth banana. OGSM is not used as a management tool. It is uh, the plan and it's like the old PowerPoints. It's made and put in a desk. That's not it. We should use it on a monthly basis at least and check whether we are progressing and whether we are on traffic lights or right. There are two elements that I like to share. That's translating the, the, the measures, the actions, the projects into a charter with some single questions. But the most important one that I would like to share with you is the do dashboard. The do dashboard is not used in many companies, though this motivates people. People believe that they like to do something. And in your plan in your OGSM, you have listed the things to do. And you have a commitment that these will be done. So if you do a tracking on these things, 
You structurally believe that if you do this thing in the right way, you get to your goals. And people like more a do dashboard than a KPI dashboard. So we track whether the initiatives are on time, on budget, on scope, on resources, and we can analyze whether and how to get green do dashboards. All right, another banana, lack of communication and involvement of the organization, the teams. The plan is made, but what happens then? I have two suggestions. The first one is, if you move into the strategy communication or telling, you can, you can work two ways. First of all, use metaphors to explain your strategy. Don't use that foolish OGSM model, which is a page full of small letters with every explanation. No, you can use metaphors, mountains, biking, sports, anything you want, rockets in space, you name it. But this will help to make it clearer for the people. If you have a mountain to climb, what's the pathway to get there? And a second one after strategy communication can be strategy cascading. It's like the, the NASA example. GFK had a strategy of putting a man on the moon. It became the objective of NASA. And again, a strategy of NASA for building a rocket becomes an objective of another team. This is one way of cascading. Theoretically, there are other ways of cascading. Though this way, you can go to your level n minus 1, n is minus 2, n minus 3 to make sure that the plan is realized. Sorry, two more bananas to go. Resistance to change. Yes, there is a culture of resistance. People don't like to change. It's, it's getting out of the comfort zone. So that's why it's important to put the challenge to the group, put the challenge to the team. You see here a picture of the female hockey team in Holland. The coach of that team, Mark Lammers, he was two times in a row second on the Olympic Games. Now, if there's one place that you do not want to be, it's the second place. You win, but you lose. And he did not know anymore what to do. His plan he had made was, 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 was realized. So he asked the team, what should I do? And he put the challenge to the team and he brainstormed. And of course, there was things about techniques. There was things about we are going to Beijing and there is another culture. There was one thing that I would like to share with you. Suddenly there's a girl who says, if you want to win, you need to be confident and you need to look good. And the guy was looking like, looking good? Normally he was calling to uh, Adidas and say, send me uh, outfits and we're going to play. Uh, but she says, no, look, look to the tennis in the outside world. We see that the number of viewers or watchers of tennis on television has boomed since the female players are dressed differently. We should do this too. So one of the strategies become to look good. And the girl was sent to Adidas. She has been knitting for a couple of days and they realized a new outfit. Imagine, after the first game, they already made the front page as the most sexy team of the Olympic Games. This is one of the strategies that gave them a confidence boost. Next to the other four or five strategies, this has made that they realized their dream and became Olympic champion. If the coach would never have the, given the challenge to the team, he would never have thought about confidence through outfits. Now, fading of strong OGSM methodology. That's the seven and last banana. Okay, you start with a team and you're using it. But there is some technique in it. You need to open discussions and close discussions. You need to prepare uh, SWTT and get to the power spot. You need to energize and inspire the team. And I recommend that it's not the boss of the team who is moderating this process because he wants to participate too. So somebody of the team needs to be the moderator and needs to make sure that you get a plan with the full team on one page in 1% one of the time. Well, because that's the minimum time that you need to invest. It might be if you do not have the right training and the right techniques that it might take, well, more days. And that's why, for instance, IKEA followed our methodology just to know because they calculate how many hours they are, they are working on strategy formulation, how they could improve the number of hours in strategy formulation projects by using the right trainings 
and the right techniques. Now, before the session, OGSM or the plan on one page might have been a black box. I invite you all now, if you have questions, don't hesitate to put them into the uh, question uh, box. Uh, I will look at them. I will briefly give a summary now, but if you have questions, raise them and I will answer them. I see that uh, some people have been chatting. Um, so now there is no question. This morning there were a couple of questions on, uh, on software. Uh, maybe I can answer that one. Uh, people were asking software and I said like software is great, but before investing 10, 20, 30, 40,000, sometimes 100,000 euro in strategic or project management software, make sure that your content is right. Because that is what's lacking in most of the plans. Having a what by how, having clear direction, clear choices. After you've done that, you can do even a lot in Excel. Um, so that was one of the questions that came back in the two webinars this morning. Um, another one was on startups. Yes, you can use this methodology also for startups. Uh, the only thing is it's going to be less on strengths and weaknesses, but more on the uh, threats, the trends and the threats. Um, so no more new questions popping up. So I will summarize these black box. Three answers or three questions were raised. Why is it a good idea to have a plan? That's the GFK story. And we had five elements. Why you need a plan. It helps you to realize your dreams. They are not just in your head. It's easier to share with your team if you've put it on a page. It makes you reflect on milestones, resources, and the transformation you need to get there. It forces you to make choices and eliminate this, uh, this uh, junk or small wins. And it makes sure that you track and measure progress, whether you're on track to reach and realize your plan or dream. We went to building a plan with an example of FC Barcelona, where we went from objective goal strategies to the measures. And we have been looking at bananas, where we discussed that you need ownership, you need goal setting, you need priorities. We call them bears. We have to work with a team. We have the monthly follow-up with the do dashboard. And it's important to understand the technique to do it in 1% of the time, to moderate it, to challenge and inspire, to open and close discussion, and to have the right things in the right place. So I hope that the black box has become more a glass box. And uh, remember this, winners have a plan, losers have an excuse. The Belgian hockey team was nearly non-existing 10 years ago. These guys built a 10-year plan, and this helped them to become an Olympic champion world champion and put Belgium on the map for hockey. The female team is following. Hockey is booming. This is not just by coincidence, but only by being here and listening here and a couple of hundred people that follow these webinars today, you already show that you're a winner. That's good. If you have any more questions, don't uh, hesitate. You can call me or you can mail me. You can uh, link uh, with me on LinkedIn. And uh, you can ask me any questions you want. I'll go quickly for a last look. Questions, no more questions. So I would like to say thank you for attending. I hope you enjoyed these 45 minutes. Hope you learned something. If you have uh, uh, some elements to add, don't hesitate to put it in the chat. And looking forward to meet you in the future. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. <laughs>